Here is a project that I had been wanting to do for quite a while. I got this Akai X201D tape deck at a flea market about a year ago. It has the typical problem that these auto-reverse machines have. The selector switch, forward or reverse, for the sound head, the playback head, is dirty. So, as you're switching directions, you'll find that the sound keeps cutting out. Now, that should be a relatively easy fix once the switch has been revealed. But I want to tear this unit down entirely, just to make sure that there are no other hidden problems anywhere. This video is not intended to be a how-to video. I'm just going to document all the relevant steps in the repair process that I find. So, here we go. Following along the service manual, I removed all the knobs, all the buttons, the head covers and the pinch roller, so I can now take off the faceplate. It is important to know that except for the two level regulator knobs, all the knobs and buttons are held in place by screws. I now have the faceplate removed. It comes off in two sections the upper silver part and the lower black part, which is quite obvious. Interesting, I found these uh, centering pieces, I guess these are. They're just uh, stuck in between the mechanism and the wooden case. They do appear to be original. They are the same kind of wood that they uh, used for the wooden case. So those are there. Unfortunately, so far I have not been able to find the switch that's causing the contact problems. It doesn't seem to be up on the front. I got the machine out of the wooden case, took it straight to the air compressor to blow all the dust out. And there was quite a bit of that. Unfortunately, it's quite crowded in here. Rather messy, in fact. But these are all the electrics for the controls and for the mechanism, so this should not require any service. Three motors, that means there are only two belts, both of which are kind of loose. I guess ideally you just go and replace them, but I don't have those replacements right now and I can't be bothered to tear this all apart in order to get the new belts in. So I'm going to clean the existing belts off and that should extend their lifetime at least a little bit more. On the bottom of the machine, this is really nice. The main circuit board has been put in using card edge connectors so I can easily take it out for some service. I also managed to find the mysterious direction switch for the audio heads. It's uh, buried deep down in there. You can kind of see it in the center of the picture with all the wires connecting to it. That should be it. I guess I already found a way to get the contact cleaner into this thing. I have not yet found the track selector switch right here. This uh, It is a mechanical switch, as you can see. This actually moves the heads around, which is interesting. But this does also have some electrical switches to it. So I'll have to keep looking. As you can certainly see, cleaning off the belts was worthwhile. I now have a tape on the machine. And as typical for my repair projects, as soon as I've started, the problems are starting to multiply. I put some contact cleaner into that hidden switch down there and it turns out that's not even the problem. The problem is a relay on the main circuit board that is turning the sound on and off while it's changing directions and it's also kind of a delay for when you turn the machine on. The relay is not going to come on immediately. Right now, the relay does not make proper contact. So the sound is rather 
quiet and distort it. The other problem that has just started to show up is uh, when I switch this to reverse, there's nothing wrong with that, but when I switch back, It's now playing backwards. Now that is because the mechanism gets stuck half the way. I have to pull the heads up manually to get my forward tracks back. Now this mechanism generally is a bit of a disaster. The track selector is moving heads around. The auto reverse is moving heads around or not so this is going to be very very hard to align and I don't think it's going to hold an alignment for very long here is the back of the motor disassembled there is this fan which interestingly is actually made out of rubber and then there is this washer that fits into a groove on the motor shaft. I just took some fine oil. Now, the key is do not use this spray can because it makes just a huge, great big mess. You want to take the oil out of the spray can and put it into a syringe like this. And I just use this, the needle, much rather to get oil into the gap in between the shaft and this uh, metal frame. I can't get this off. As you can see, I almost stripped the screw right there. But there is a sponge or some sort of a felt pad inside of there, inside of this uh, thing. And I guess I would have drilled a hole into there as a proper oil port if they had built this machine a bit more service friendly. But anyway, I uh, soaked the felt in there in the fine oil. And uh, looking, looking at this uh, scale on the syringe, I'd say I, I guess I put about half a milliliter of oil into there. So that should be good. The front bearing is going to be quite a lot more complicated because there is not a lot of space to work with. And I'll try. Is this motor, as we turn it on, this is the highest speed. And as you can probably hear, the motor is quite loud. This is hard to see, but I applied some oil into the gap in between the front fan and the front bearing with a machine lying on its back. So I'm hoping that this oil is somehow going to flow down into this uh, felt pad under the metal cover. I can't really force it. If I turn the machine on, it's just going to start spraying the oil everywhere. You can kind of see some of it on the motors off to the side. So I'm going to let that soak in. While I'm waiting for the oil to soak in, I took out the electronics. We've already seen how these connect to the machine with card edge connectors. Really a brilliant design, makes it so much easier. Interestingly, there is a JVC logo up there. So maybe they made the circuit board, maybe they made the whole entire amplifier. Another interesting thing is this, one right there and one right there. These are hybrid circuits. They are not ICs. They are really just two traditional transistors and a couple of printed resistors integrated into uh, one of these green packages. It's really quite a simple circuit. I don't know why they even bothered making this. But they did. And then there we have this relay that seems to cause problems. What this does is it switches different amplification factors in these two ICs. So when the machine is in mute, 
the amplification of these ICs is low. And then in normal operation, obviously normal amplification factor. And so I think this is making some bad contact. So I'll desolder this. Maybe I can clean it. If not, I'm just going to short it out. Here is the relay taken apart. I used my method of pulling a strip of paper soaked in contact cleaner through the closed contacts. Of course, in this case, I had to manually hold the contacts closed. I didn't get a lot of dirt out of this, so I'm not sure if that fixed the problem. Here is the relay back together. Rather primitive, you might be able to see. It's all held together just with some sticky tape. The circuit board has been reassembled and reinstalled. I sprayed the record play switches. I also sprayed the level regulators as well as the equalizer switch in the front with the contact cleaner. And I set the voltage selector on the back for 240 volts instead of 220 volts. And this, unfortunately, is where these old recordings end. I never got the Akai reel-to-reel -reel repaired because problems just kept multiplying. Cleaning the relay contacts did not help at all. And then, in addition to that problem, the machine also started to run at the wrong speed. Now this seems to have been something to do with the pinch roller, because if you push the pinch roller against the capstan really hard, the machine would return to running at the correct speed. But anyway, at that point I was just simply fed up with the machine. I put it up on eBay as a parts unit, but luckily I actually sold it to a collector who picked it up locally and he was quite optimistic that he'd be able to fully repair the machine. So it is a happy end, but unfortunately I can't present it to you on video. Thank you for watching.